for oops, what do we have? Oh, there we go. Four tips for cheaper flights. Let's talk about it. I feel like I haven't done like a teaching live in a while. I'll be saying I'm gonna do more of these and then I don't, but <laughs> I won't be doing more of them. So I'm still doing this 30 day live challenge right now where I am setting a goal to go live every single day for 30 days for at least 15 minutes. So I'm still sticking it out here, y'all. So I have a lot of ideas for different topics. We're going live around travel, um, you know, travel tips, budget travel tips, um, how to make more money to travel, all of those things. So <clears throat> per the usual, drop your travel questions, any questions that you have about travel, living abroad, anything like that. My husband and I have been living abroad for mm, roughly six months-ish. We left the, um, so much, so much, everything want to pop up right now. We left, my husband and I left the United States back in February and we um, have been gallivanting the globe. So we've been in eight different countries this year so far. We also did a visit back to the US and then we left again. So um, it's been, uh, it's been a journey for sure. It's been really rewarding. It's been a lot of fun. We've had a lot of really cool experiences. We've had some moments that were not so great <laughs> as well um one of the things that i talk about on here is the like unsexy parts of travel as well i even have some videos on that on my page because at the end of the day you know i always tell people travel is amazing i encourage everybody to travel but also to recognize that travel is not all sunshine and rainbows there's a lot of really annoying shit about travel like there's some days where I want to scream. We actually, my husband and I, we have this mantra. Whenever we find ourselves being like really annoyed, whether it's something like being stuck in a taxi that should have been a 10 minute ride and it's like an hour ride or we get to the airport and our flight is delayed or we're hauling ass to our flight or you know we can't even get an Uber because our Uber driver keeps canceling on us. Whatever, whatever it is, we just have this mantra where we just say, this is travel. And that mantra reminds us that this is the life we chose. Like this, because it really is travel. Travel is not just the photos you see on TikTok or on Instagram where people are in like the beautiful waters or the mountains and the nice views. Like that's, that is a very, very small part of travel. Traveling itself, like getting from A to B, the booking, the researching, all of that stuff, like that's not as sexy, but it's part of it, right? I mean, unless you have somebody who, you know, you got on payroll or like somebody who's just gonna do all that stuff for you, then hey, there's other parts to it too. Hey, Chris, I might do the 12 countries in 12 months thing. Hey, I, I support it. Um, so we definitely learned a lot of lessons, but anywho, today we're going to be talking about some tips for how to get cheaper flights. But first off, welcome y'all. Welcome to Panama. It's 526 PM here in Panama. I thought I was going to be walking to the store right now, but that weather outside is crazy. Okay. Like that lightning is like, that lightning is like, it's actually really beautiful <laughs> like looking at it, but obviously it's not the weather where your girl is about to be outside. Okay. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate it. I was about to say, damn, can y'all heart me up in here? I feel like, I don't know, lately TikTok, my lives been giving a lot of Instagram energy. Like my TikTok lives been giving a lot of that lurker energy. Like I'm going to just come in and look and watch this creator spend her precious time talking into this little box, but I ain't going to talk back to her, but I ain't going to double tap the screen. And I'm just saying like, heart your girl up. Okay. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Um, also, y'all, let me know where you are joining in from. Like I said, I am in Panama right now, 5, 5.30 p.m. roughly. Let me know where you are in the world. Let me know what time it is. Rep your city, rep your state, rep your country. Just let me know where you're at. Um, again, drop any of your travel questions, any of your questions about living abroad, and I'm really just going to start diving into some of these tips for how to get cheaper flights. So this is a question that I get a lot, which makes a lot of sense because most of the time, whenever it comes to travel, the most expensive things are the flights and the accommodation. So obviously, any way that you can, um, <laughs> Jerry says 12 countries in 12 months. Yeah, I mean, listen, I've been to eight countries in... Oh, it's August. I've been to eight countries in eight months and I can tell you that, yeah, that's a lot. Like, I mean, it's obviously it's possible and people do it and it's incredible, but you know, just, just be prepared for what comes along with travel. It's, it's a great life to have and it comes with, with ups and downs just like everything else. But, um, 
Yeah, if you can get cheaper flights and cheaper accommodations, then it definitely makes travel a lot, lot less, a lot less expensive versus, you know, if you're always playing, if you're always paying full price for everything, if you don't know how to find the good deals, etc. So go on, go on and go ahead and dive into these four tips. The number one tip that I have for getting cheaper flights is, <clears throat> by the way, if you find these tips helpful, please let me know in the comments, like drop the word helpful, like this live, share this live. I appreciate it. But the first tip is to travel during off season and off season is not the same for everybody. This summer I went to Spain, France, Armenia, and Greece to spend a lot on flights. Spain, France, is Armenia in Europe? Yeah, you know, people used to always talk about, thank y'all for the hearts, people used to always talk about how traveling in Europe is like so cheap once you get there. And I think that that was very much like pre-COVID because to be honest with you, Whenever I was in Europe last year, like I think I paid like $200 for a one-way flight from Germany to Netherlands. And I was like, what? I was like, what is this? What is this? So I don't know. The first time I ever went to Europe was in like 2016. Um, Ebony, thank you for the hearts and thank you for sharing. The first time I went to Europe was like back in the day. And I remember I was in Bulgaria. Don't ask. And I remember this girl who I was there with, she was telling me, I worked with her, I wasn't there with her, but we worked together. I remember her talking about how like she could fly to Greece for like $30. And I, that was a very common thing back in the day. Like I said, these days, it's more like 150 to 250 getting around Europe, depending on where you're going. And you know, arguably that is still not a bad price compared to what you would pay coming from the States, but everything is relative, right? Like I remember, I live in North Carolina and I remember when a flight to Mexico for 300 was on like the expensive side. After COVID, flights to Mexico, which is on the same flipping continent as the United States, were like $600. And I was like, y'all gotta stop. Like you have to stop. But anywho, traveling during off season. So again, off season is going to be different depending on what country you're in. So for example, right now I am in Central America and a lot of, in Central America technically isn't a continent. I, I always get, I always wonder like, what if you don't fall on a continent? Like, are you just, I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. But Central America are places like Panama, where I am right now. Panama, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Honduras, um, Guatemala. I might be missing one. But I might be missing one or two, actually. Did I say Costa Rica? Anyways, um, so in a lot of these countries, this time of year is what is considered rainy season. And the first country I went to in Central America was El Salvador. I went for my 30th birthday two years ago, 2022. And I remember like doing the research and seeing that it was rainy season. But I was like, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to go. And y'all, I think it rained like we were there for four days. It was a short trip because I was also getting married <laughs> and like and like the next month but i was like i had not been out of the country in a couple of years and i was like a fiend itching to get the hell out of the states so um i remember looking up the weather but when we got there like it did rain but like the thing about rainy season is based on what i've seen and what i was going to say is right now i'm in panama which is also in central america during rainy season this is the third time i've been to central america during rainy season because i went to costa rica for my honeymoon in rainy season and the thing about rainy season is will it rain a lot maybe but will it rain every day maybe however just because it's rainy season or just because it rains every day it doesn't mean it rains all day every day so for example um travel last year around this time to paris for a 320 round trip off season yes yes londia i'm i am 100 here for it um someone was telling me recently that they actually really like going to it was either europe or france in in february i was like that's too cold for me <laughs> but um when we were in costa rica on our honeymoon i think it rained once we were there for six nights and it rained once and it was like overnight so a lot of times whenever it rains and again i can't speak for every country but i'm telling you specifically about central america a lot of times if it rains like the rain it's like a flash of rain or like it might rain for like a few hours in the evening or like during the day so most of the time there's still so much that you can do so for example i had some friends and my sister came here a couple weeks ago celebrating one of my friend's birthdays and um it was you know still rainy season and like the rain didn't stop anything like it didn't stop any of their plans so and it didn't stop any of my plans whenever i was in costa rica or el salvador so don't let 
because it's not like the hot season, don't let that stop you from traveling. If anything, if you want to save some money, travel during those times because the flights are cheaper, accommodations are cheaper, and excursions are cheaper because people, you know, people know that like, you know, I don't got a lot of people coming here right now, so I'm going to drop the prices. And thank you for the rose. Um, I just spit, my bad. And who am I saying my bad to? Ain't nobody in the room but me. <laughs> but anyway, um, so yeah, don't be afraid to travel during off season. It's like that in Africa too, where it would rain like three days in a row. So um, when you say three days in a row, do you mean like all day? Because like here in Panama, I really have not experienced like a lot of like all day, everyday raining. Like I said, I think I can maybe count on one hand how many days it's rained for more than like an hour or two. Like it rains and I will not, I will say this. I will say that you don't get as much sun new here. Welcome. Um, you don't get as much sun in, um, in Panama specifically. I'm trying to think in El Salvador. It was, I remember being hot in El Salvador. In Costa Rica, it was hot as shit. We were on the Caribbean side. Oh, love Puerto Viejo in Costa Rica, y'all. Highly, highly recommend. But yeah, um, sometimes you don't get a lot of sun. So I will say that like some, sometimes the, the days are like cloudy here so if you are someone who's like i definitely want to see the sun that is something to keep in mind so i went to peru back in 2019 and i was there in september and like i was there during so peru has sunny season and non-sunny season and i was there during the non-sunny season and while i did really enjoy my time in peru i missed the sun y'all i'm not gonna lie to you like i was like damn it was, we literally had a joke because this is whenever i was traveling with remote year which is a work travel company and um i literally remember there was kind of like a joke because we were all on slack and like people would like pop on slack and be like the sun is out go run outside so i would say definitely keep that in mind if you are someone who like you know you don't want to go somewhere unless it is going to be super sunny be mindful about um the season that you travel but you can save a lot of money if you travel during off season and like I said, if y'all find these tips helpful, thank you for all the hearts. Please keep those coming. If you find these tips helpful, please drop helpful in the comments. I appreciate all the engagement. I'm doing this personal live challenge of going live 30 days in a row because I was going live a lot um, a few months ago and then I ended up going back to the States for a visit. I wasn't going live as much and then TikTok basically was like, ah, joke's on you. And so now I'm really trying to get pushed back out to the FYP page. So I'm actually really happy to see that people are landing here from the For You page. So shout out to y'all. I appreciate it. Could I live there for one month for 500? Vibrant, could you live where? Uh, what place are you talking about? Um, but let me know if y'all have any other questions about off season. And like I said, it really just depends on the country. You can literally just Google like best time, best times to visit, you know, insert country, Panama. Nah, definitely not. Um, I don't actually don't, I actually don't know where you could live off of $500 a month to be honest, like, and actually be in a location that is not in the slums. I will say, I don't know where you could do that for $500 a month, but, um, yeah, like I said, let me know if, let me know if you have any other questions about that. If you Google, a lot of times it will tell you it'll tell you like the peak seasons. It'll tell you about the weather, etc. So if you see if you see that it says, oh, the best times to travel are when it's dry during this time, you know that can be like not like a red flag, but you know just make a note to yourself of like, oh, okay, then I probably want to go on like a different month. And like I said, don't stress so much about rainy season. I've I've literally been in situations where I was about to travel somewhere and I'm looking at the weather and I see that it's going to rain all day, every day, and I go there and it does not happen. So that's the first tip. The second tip, thank y'all so much for all the hearts. I appreciate it. The second tip for getting cheaper flights is to, oh my God, I just want to, before I say this, I just need to say, this is my favorite tip for getting cheaper flights. And this is one of those things where I could not believe I didn't know this. And once I discovered this, I was like, where the hell have I been? So this is the time to share this live. If you have a travel buddy, a one of you travel buddy, or somebody who you know who like likes to travel and they want to know how to get better deals on flights, this is the time to share the live. Because again, this is a tip that anybody can do. It don't cost you a damn thing. It takes like literally five minutes or less and it is, it, it's, it's gonna change the game for you. And I will go ahead and point out that not everybody can do it. It's gonna depend on like your work, your lifestyle, et cetera. But y'all, if you allow the flight prices to choose when you travel, you will save so much money. 
I used to be the type of traveler where I would basically, I would pick my dates and then I would be like, okay, these are the dates I'm going. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing angel. I would be like, okay, these are the days that I am going. So I'm going to go look for a flight. Nah, nah, nah. Do not do that. And let me preface this by saying, I understand this is not the case for everybody. For example, my sister is a nurse. She works in um, the VA hospital and y'all no exaggeration. <laughs> like she has to put in her time like a year in advance. And I remember the first time she told me that I was like, you got me fucked up, but she didn't, she ain't gonna quit her job. So, you know, there's that. But um, I, so I do understand that for some people, it's not possible for some people, you have to secure your dates further in advance. Um, sorry, can't help you there. But if you have flexibility, I highly recommend letting the flights tell you when to fly because a lot of times, whenever you look at flight prices, you can literally save hundreds of dollars, y'all. Y'all, I have literally seen a flight be 700 fucking dollars more one day after. One day. Now, if imagine if you put in your time at work or, you know, maybe it's not even at work, but maybe you just like say like, okay, these are the days I'm going to travel. <clears throat> And you don't even do any research. Exactly. You don't even do any research and you and you just go pick that day. No, no, no. You need to use a tool like Google Flights. You go in Google Flights and then you put in your destination. And then once you have like the, you know, round trip one way and the destination, look for that entire month and see when it's the cheapest to fly and then determine when you are going to fly. Now, understand, of course, flight prices do change, but most of the time, the days that are the cheapest will still say the cheapest, if that makes sense. So like, even if the flights do go up, the days that are the cheapest will more than likely stay the same. So allow the flights to tell you when to fly. Like as of right now, me and my husband are in Panama. We only have five days left here in, in this apartment. It's still kind of up in the air if we're gonna be leaving Panama exactly in five days, but six days. What's today, Thursday? Six days. Um, But like, we already know that we're not beholden to September 4th, even though we have to be out of this apartment on September 4th. Like, if we see a better flight for September 6th, please believe we will go take our asses to a hotel or an Airbnb or what the hell ever for two nights to save hundreds of dollars because it really makes a big difference. So honestly, thank you for sharing, Carol. Um, honestly, allow the flights to let you know when to travel. Like you will end up saving so much money. And honestly, y'all, I can't tell you why the flights are cheaper on some days. A lot of people say the Tuesdays are the cheapest day to travel. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just telling you based on my experience, there is no one day. I will say that normally, no, because I used to think that Fridays, like Fridays and Saturdays were always more expensive, but or, or like the weekend. No, I used to think that like Fridays and Sundays were the most expensive, but for us to leave the States, we actually flew to Panama on a Sunday because it was cheaper than the Thursday, Friday that we were thinking about leaving before. So let the flight prices tell you when to travel. Like I said, Google flights is super easy. It's a free tool. You can go on there. You can look months ahead of time and let that determine when you are going to travel. I need savings flight to Ghana. I didn't see any last year. So I booked anyway round trip was 15. I need savings flight to Ghana. Um, I mean, if you're already booked, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, unless you can cancel it, but I mean, and at the end of the day, y'all, this is a tip that you can use going forward. If your flight, if you are able to like change it without any change fees, or if you are able to cancel it, go for it. But otherwise just use this tip for next time. Thank y'all for the hearts. Um, going into tip number three, this is also something that I learned in like the last two years. And it's one of those things where I learned it, but I didn't realize that I had learned it. And then once I did, I was like, oh, and I started paying attention. Now, keep in mind, me and my man, we live in abroad, right? We've been to eight different countries this year. We have been in a lot of airports. Eight countries does not mean eight airports, y'all. It's probably been more like 16 airports. We're talking like layovers, quick layovers, overnight layovers. We've been in a lot of different airports and on a lot of different flights. And what I can tell you is there are some airports that are just going to be a lot cheaper to fly in or out of. Y'all, listen, I'm from North Carolina and I, North Carolina is a beautiful state and I'm from the Raleigh area and which is meh, meh in my opinion. But I literally remember telling my husband that if when we do decide to go back to North Carolina, I'm like, bro, can we go to Charlotte? 
because the flight and Charlotte is a two hour drive for me from well from where I'm from in North Carolina which is funny because I was actually born in Charlotte it don't matter the point is a two hour drive y'all when I tell you Charlotte has way better flights than RDU RDU is the airport that I fly out of and it honestly pisses me off because at the end of the day is it like a huge deal for me to um for me to like drive to Charlotte or something no it's not I mean it, it's tedious but again y'all sometimes thank you for sharing Elizabeth sometimes you can literally save hundreds of dollars depending on the airport so again I'm from North Carolina if y'all live in New York or New Jersey, honestly, I'm not trying to hear no complaints because y'all have the best flight deals. Fight me. JFK has the best international flight deals. They hit my inbox all the time. I don't even know why I have alerts on because I'm not even in New York, but I just get mesmerized at all of the amazing flight deals that I see coming in from New York. And don't even get me started on Europe. Europe from New York? It... You literally, you do not have to pay more than five hundred dollars for a round trip ticket from New York to to Europe. You don't. If you do, like, then you didn't do what I told you to do before. You don't have to. Like, R not RDU. JFK has amazing flight deals. LAX actually has great flight deals as well. I've never flown into LAX, um, and because like in North Carolina, it's like for me to fly from New York to where I live in North Carolina is like so quick and so cheap. I can only get a flight for $100 or less. So a lot of times like that's what we do. I'd rather not fly in the NYC. Okay, well then don't. <laughs> but what I'm telling y'all is you're going to find a lot better flight deal. So for example, we've been living abroad, but we did go visit the US at the end of June and we were there through July. And I didn't even, I won't say I didn't even look because I'm sure I did look. I did originally look and we were in Bangkok at the time in Thailand. So I did originally look, but in the back of my mind, I already knew I wasn't about to fly. I was not about to fly to a damn RDU. We flew our asses right to New York and ended up saving like $300 on our flight, which was, not, which was nice because like I said, flying from New York to RDU where I live back in North Carolina is like, it's stupid easy. It's like less than a two hour flight. And um, is it even an hour? I think it might be like an hour and a half. Um, it's like less than a three hour, less than a two hour flight. And um, it's cheap. I, that flight was actually free because I had points. But even even if I didn't have points, it was like I think like 130 bucks for for us to fly from New York to there. So y'all do not sleep on looking at other airports. And this is not just okay. okay. Are you going to the store? Yeah. Will you get some bowls? Some bowls and some toilet paper. Thank you. Um, I'm in Washington, D.C. All three of our airports are, are expensive. I have heard that about D.C., which blows my mind because it's the capital. Like, that don't even make no sense to me. But listen, I get it. I really do get it. Like I said, the nice thing about my airport at RDU is, like, it's so small and so easy to get through. Like, that, my airport is, like, in and out, which I love. But, um, it didn't even got a lounge, y'all. My airport don't even got a lounge. That's why I'm like, I'm gonna just go to Charlotte. But I'm probably talking shit because I'm gonna wanna be close to my friends who are in RDU. Just joining, so can you go over cheaper flights? <laughs> Is it Na Naya? Naya? Um, girl, we still going over them. Like, we, we not done. We, we still knocking them out. The first one was to travel during off season. The second one was to let the flight prices choose your date. And the third one we're talking about right now is flying into the bigger airport. So what I was gonna say is, this does count for you know flying back home but y'all it goes both ways so i'll give you another example me and my husband we knew that we were going to go to we started in brazil this whole live abroad journey started off in brazil we spent pretty much all of february in brazil and then we knew we were going to asia next so originally we kept trying to find the cheapest flights to get into vietnam y'all them flights was crazy and you know how like once you have had something, you just can't, you can't downgrade. Like, you know what I mean? Like you can't unknow something. Once you woke, you can't go back. Y'all, it's the same thing with flights. Like once you started getting good flight deals, it feels like, it feels painful to pay a certain price for a flight. Like I've only flown business class one time and I got, I paid $600 to fly business class back from Egypt. And now I'd be looking at business class flights and I'm like, y'all got me fucked up. I am paying it knowing damn well that $600 for a business class flight is like crazy inexpensive, but it is what it is. 
And I would pay more than that for a business class flight, but that is how I feel. So it was the same thing, right? Like whenever we were looking at how we were going to get to Asia, we kept trying to look at like all these different flights for Vietnam. And then I took my ass on Google and I, I don't even remember exactly what I Googled, but it was something along the lines of like cheapest ways of flying to Vietnam and then good old Reddit. You know, I have a friend who always says nobody has an excuse to be stupid because we have the internet. And I really be feeling that shit because sometimes people be saying, I don't know, I don't know. And I'm like, there ain't a damn thing you don't know. You got YouTube University. You got Google University. You got TikTok. You Saying I don't know in 2024, like, is dumb. Sorry, not sorry. It's dumb. Like, look it up. There is an answer for everything. I don't, it may not get you all the answers you need, but I'm willing to bet you can get a next step if you get your ass online. But that's a whole other conversation. Thank you for the gift. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, like, so I Googled what is the cheapest way to get into Vietnam? And guess what? Somebody was like, fly into Thailand. And I said, ooh, what? So you know what we did? We flew our asses into BKK, Bangkok. And I think we paid, it was like a little bit less than $900 each for both of our flights to, to Asia. Yeah, I be hearing people talk about paying like $1,800, $1,900 for a flight to Asia. And I'm like, if that's not business class, you are out of your fucking mind. And granted, I do understand that my flight was one way, but I don't care. You still got me fucked up. I'm not paying two grand for, for an economy flight. Like, I'm, there's just, no, I'm, there ain't no way in hell I'm paying a, that much money to be sitting in average leg room. Like, you, hell no. If this flight, honestly, I don't even think I could do more than a grand. I'm trying to think, what was my flight to Egypt? I used points for that flight, like to there. Uh, well, no, my round trip flight, I think it was, I think it was right at like a thousand. It was like right at the cusp. And when I went to Egypt, I didn't know half of what I know now about travel. Let me just put that out there, y'all. I have learned so much economy people be farting jesus you know what i'm not even touching that when you being childish i'm not even messing with you kayana uh-uh uh-uh kayana kayana no i'm not even messing with you right now but <laughs> there's no reason y'all like i like i said the thing the thing about travel is y'all travel is a skill like people People feel like they have to know all of these things. And at the end of the day, travel is a skill. The more you travel, the more you learn. I have learned, oh my God. Okay, Anna, I cannot. I, I can't even stop laughing. That is, I would have been so pissed. Oh, I would have been pissed. Um, I can't laugh because then I lose my train of thought. What was I talking about? Um, the economy flights. Egypt. I gotta get my money up to get to first class. Me too, girl. I'm right there with you. I am right there with you. We go get there, though. We go get there, okay? Oh, yes. Travel is a skill. The more you travel, the more you learn. Like, even though I've been traveling since 2019, y'all, I have learned the most about budget travel in the last two years. So, just travel. Like, do some research. I mean, you're already, look, you, you've already done a great job. You're here, right? You're here in this live. You're listening to somebody else who has done it. They, y'all, you can travel for cheap. I have a budget travel masterclass. It is in my bio. It is only $14. It is a $14 investment to teach you how to save thousands, thousands on travel for the rest of your life. You think these tips are good? You think these tips, you think these tips in here are good? I have so many more in the budget travel masterclass like how to never pay full price for an airbnb how to get five star hotels for like a two and three star price like y'all i'm telling you how to keep your entire trip less than one thousand dollars total total it's possible y'all like i know that it's possible because i've done it so Peep the Budget Travel Masterclass if you want more tips. Like I said, it's only $14, and it's going to show you how to save money on travel for the rest of your life. And the more I learn, the more you learn, because I actually update that masterclass at least like quarterly with the new information, because again, I'm always learning more, and when I do, I send you the updated one. So like you are constantly staying up to date with all the budget travel hacks, so don't hesitate to grab that. I'm going to Bali in March. What tips do you have? Get you some mosquito spray. Get you some mosquito spray. Because you're going to get eaten alive, bitch. I'm just playing. I'm not playing, no. Bug spray. Um, 
I was only in Bali for five days. I don't really have a lot of tips for Bali. It's just, it's such a beautiful place. I mean, honestly, like, it's just, it's so beautiful there. Like, but let me know if you have any specific questions about Bali. Whenever I think of tips for Bali specifically, people talk about Bali belly. I didn't have that issue, but I, you might want to pack some probiotics because apparently a lot of people did have that issue. A lot of people say that whenever you go to Bali, you should travel like to multiple cities. I did not because I only did Ubud because we were just, we didn't have energy at that point in time to like do, to be doing all that moving around. So we only did Ubud and we did a lot in those five days, but um, it's Bali is so beautiful y'all. It really is. Thank y'all for the hearts. I appreciate it. Please keep them coming. Um, again, let me know if these tips are helpful for y'all because I still got more. I still got more. So I think I just did tip number three. Yeah. So the tip we're talking about right now is flying into larger, larger, larger airports. So like I said, whenever we were going to, was that a, a recommended location in Bali? Ubud? Yeah. It's U-B-U-D. That's a very popular place to go there. And like I said, there's, there's plenty more, but that's, that's the only place that we went to in Bali. Um, like I said, whenever we went to, whenever we were trying to figure out how to get to Vietnam for a better price, we ended up flying into Thailand. And then for us to fly from Thailand to Vietnam, I think our ticket was less than $200, y'all. So we saved hundreds of dollars because we flew into a different airport. So another tip I have, which is kind of similar to the last one is flying into a near, actually, I guess it is the last one. Okay. Yeah. So the first one was like flying from like a nearby airport. So depending on how, listen, Vietnam is so dope. I loved it there. Love the food. Phenomenal. The people so kind, just it's, I highly, highly, I highly recommend Vietnam, like stupid cheap. If you're making American money, like we were eating breakfast for like less than $2. Like, Oh my God, the fuck. I don't even want to talk about it because I get depressed that I'm not there. Anyway, um, so yeah, the first tip is whenever you're thinking about the airport that you're going to leave from, Vietnam can see can see you a whole wardrobe. Oh, you mean so? Yeah, 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 100%. I see a lot of people do that too. I attempted to do that, but it just, it didn't work out the way I thought it was going to. But yeah, so think about your home airport, but then also think, A, what airports are close to you? Like for me, RDU, Charlotte is an airport that's really close, but also ATL, which, you know, Atlanta, I would have expected Atlanta to have better flight deals. In my opinion, Atlanta flight deals be, I, like they be kind of mid in my opinion, but also I always look in like Atlanta. I always look in, um, Miami, New York, New Jersey, all of them. And then on the flip side, also wherever your destination is, consider if you can fly into somewhere cheaper around there and then fly from there to your destination. I'm close to EWR. Sometimes JFK is a little better. Yeah, EWR has good, has really good flight deals too, but based on what I've seen, JFK is the best. Like I said, I think LAX has really good deals as well. I just don't know because LAX is so far from where I live. So like, I haven't seen a deal where it would be cheaper for me to fly there because it's not that cheap for me to fly from LAX to North Carolina. Um, and so to kind of wrap this up, I want to tell y'all about like the website that I discovered a few months ago. So I do love Google flights. Don't get me wrong. I love, um, I found a new for El Salvador for $93. Yeah, I have no problem believing it. Love El Salvador, by the way. Um, but I love, um, yeah, Kayana, I would, I would definitely look into LAX. I love Google Flights, but y'all, Kiwi.com, Kiwi, oh shit, I scratched my lip. Kiwi.com actually allows you to put in multiple departing airports. Like, when I saw all that, it blew my mind. Like, blew my mind. Because, like, with Google, with Google Flights, for example, and again, I love Google Flights. If I know that, like, this is the airport I'm flying from. I will, do, I will do Google flights. But for example, whenever we were looking to fly home from Thailand, like I was putting in, I was putting in Atlanta, New York, New Jersey, Charlotte. I was putting in all these different airports. So Kiwi.com will actually allow you to, um, to put in different airports. So in all in one search is my point. It's not just like, okay, well, here's how much it is if you fly from here. Here's how much it is if you fly from here. You can put in all the airports in the search bar and your search results, you can browse through and it'll give you multiple airports. And I couldn't believe I hadn't heard of Kiwi.com. And to this day, I don't hear a lot of people talking about it and I don't know why. It's completely free. So highly, highly recommend using Kiwi.com. 
And like I said, y'all, I give so many more budget travel tips in my budget travel masterclass. So if y'all love these, invest the fourteen dollars and get the get the masterclass because I drop hella gems in there, like hella gems in that masterclass. I put my heart and soul into that masterclass. And if any of you have gotten any of my products before, whether they're free or paid, I do also have a free travel guide. If anybody is like really new to travel you consider yourself like a travel newbie or a travel beginner and you feel like you don't even know where to start whenever it comes to getting these passport stamps get my free travel guide that's in my bio as well but i always put my heart into whatever products that i create like i'm not i'm not out here to like give you something where like you read over it one time and it's gone no the products that you get for me i'm like listen you might go through it but you're gonna come back and revisit it i like to create products that evolve with people so Check out the masterclass if you want more budget travel tips. I also have more travel tips on my profile. You can check those out as well. And um, yeah, that's really it. Those are all the tips I got for y'all. So I know this live was kind of quick. Like I said, my commitment is minimum 15 minutes. This is day four out of 30 for my 30 day live challenge. But I appreciate y'all joining. I appreciate the hearts and all of that. Hit that follow button if you have not already. And you really gave a gem about Kiwi. Bria, I'm glad that you love it. I'm, listen, tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your cousin. Because, listen, when I first saw it, I was like, how could I not have known about this website? Yeah, Kiwi is amazing. Um, but, yeah, thank y'all again for joining. I will catch y'all next time. I'll be back doing more. Um, I'm going to keep this in the lot. Bria, that's not right. <laughs> Oh my God, corporate ID. I have no idea what that means or what you're talking about. <laughs> but, um, keep your travel questions coming. I do a lot of travel Q and A's. I also talk about different ways to make money from anywhere in the world. Cause that's a question that I get a lot when people ask me like, how do I afford to travel? How do I pay for travel? How do I make money while living abroad? I got a move abroad guide in my bio as well. Listen y'all, I got the resources, okay? Go shopping in my bio. I got free resources paid resources, but I make these resources based on the questions that y'all ask me. So go check them out. And like I said, I will catch y'all next time. Thank y'all again for joining.